Hey you guys, I'm back. Told you guys I would be back and I am back with another, you know, uh, weird update for Tamla Horsford's case. Um, you know, we are team Tamla all day over here and we are searching for the truth just like the family, just like her friends, and just like the people that she has touched over social media. So if you don't like it, you can get out. And if you wanna talk about it and really dive deep into this, please subscribe, also like, share, and comment. And let's you know get this back out there. Let's keep discussing this because the news is still discussing this. So let's keep discussing it ourselves and amongst ourselves so that we can come to some sort of clarity on this situation, which seems to keep getting more and more muddy. So I'm here on WSB TV 2 Atlanta, and that's the website I'm on. It looks like they came out with an article 18 hours ago, February 22nd of 2019, Forsyth County, Georgia. The Forsyth County Sheriff has closed the case of a mother of five who fell off a balcony and died at a house party, but the family's attorney wants to talk to him. Attorney Ralph Fernandez is representing Tamla Horsford's family. Fernandez told Channel 2's Mike Pechenik on Friday that although the case is closed, his work is just beginning. After filing an open records request, Pechenik was able to get his hands on the entire case file, a file Fernandez will be going through with a fine tooth comb. You've got to keep an open mind even when you are walking through a minefield, Fernandez said. When asked if he thought the case was prematurely closed, Fernandez said, I can't pass judgment until I review what they have. Horsford's, Horsford died last November after attending an overnight sleepover at a Forsyth County home. A Georgia Bureau of Investigation and Autopsy says the mother of five suffered a broken neck after she accidentally fell off a balcony. The case file included previously unseen photos of the backyard where party of goers found Horsford's body and transcriptions of interviews with witnesses including the homeowner. She told detectives Horsford didn't seem drunk at all before, any, before everyone went to sleep the night before. When detectives asked the homeowner's boy, boyfriend, Jose Barrera, if, she, if he threw her off the rail, he said, no, I did not, and denied anyone else would have either. How can he contest that? How can he contest that nobody else would do that? And then in the, in the phone call to police, which we're going to get to, I just don't understand that why, if he's the homeowner's boyfriend, why does he act like he doesn't know what her name is? How did you invite this person over to a slumber party and you barely know who the person is in the phone call, in the 911 audio? Sorry about that, you guys. Let's get back into this article. <sighs> the case came to light after Pechnik learned that Barrera, who worked as a court reporter, was fired for misusing his job to access the incident report in, during an active investigation. What jumps out in this case is there is, an, uh, there is some inconsistencies in the initial statements that were made by individuals at the scene, Fernandez said. And if you look at my videos that I made several on, I think I made three or four on, um... They all have some different information. And like I said, I was getting it off the news. So, yeah. There's a lot of inconsistencies. The GBI toxicology report says Horsford had a blood alcohol level nearly three times the legal limit to drive in Georgia and had THC, which I didn't know about, and Xanax in her system. Investigators believe that contributed to her fall so I'm so drunk I'm so high I go outside and I just fall off of a railing because I couldn't sit down in one of the chairs out there on the balcony or I couldn't sit down and fall asleep and pass out like everybody else that was at the party I just fall off of a balcony 
but okay. Fernandez says the family isn't happy with how the sheriff's office notified them of the case's conclusion. He says her husband and father got calls from a detective about an hour before a news conference to say the case was closed and telling them how to get the file. A sheriff's spokesperson confirms that's how it went down, but says the sheriff insisted the family be notified before Wednesday's news conference. So they hurried up and shut this case down like we knew they were going to do. But it's a couple more things that are coming out on the back end that I have been looking at. Me and another Instagram LA show follower and helper has been pushing me to look more into this story. And I have. So they found her on November 4th face down in the backyard. So let's get to the audio of the 911 recording as well. I want to pull that up as well. Let me get on YouTube to do that because there's too many ads on this website, on these websites. I can't take it. But um, let's get into the 911 call, talk about that briefly, and discuss how that 911 call sounded very, very suspicious. Give me just a second, y'all computers acting weird but we got we got some information we're going to put it out there and i hope you guys still you know care about her i know attention spans may be very delicate may be very very short but you know if you still care about something hopefully you still look into it research it see where it's headed because i'm kind of curious at this point you know, to see what kind of charges would be brought to an officer opening an investigation that you are involved in. You, you, you are dating the homeowner where this accident took place. So why would you be so anxious in um, accessing those documents? And then later it comes out that... Um, you called 911. You called 911, Jose Barrero? Was that you we heard on the news? Now, this is coming from. I hope you can hear it. What's the address? 4450 Woodlake Court. 4 Woodlet. Woodlet, okay. All right, 4450 Woodlet Court. What is your name? My name is John Myers, J-E-A-N-N-E. Oh. Okay, and your federal is 60 or not? That's not. Yes, no, okay, no. what's going on? Um, we had people over last night who were just eating. Most of the time, she bagged one of them. Stayed on the balcony. She was drinking, and we just went out there outside, and she went face down in the backyard. It looks like me. I'm guessing maybe she fell off the balcony, but she's sick. Okay, is she breathing? I, I don't know. I don't know. If she's face down. Okay. How, how old is she? That's 41. Here, hold on. Hey, this is Jose Barrera. Hey, have y'all checked to see if she's breathing? She's not moving one bit. She's not breathing. Um, I just try to assess her customer. She's completely face down in the yard. Now, can we please, I hope you guys can hear that. If not, if you need to hear the 911 call, it's on 11 Alive News. Um... First of all, let's just break down how calm these people are. Even the woman, a woman, um, she was very, very calm. She wasn't crying. It didn't sound like she was panicking. She was giving information and it sounded like she stuttered on herself when she said that they were upstairs and then she said outside really, really quick. Um, so she kind of stuttered over that wording um, about where they were, were they out upstairs or outside? Which one were you? 
Um, and then it's kind of funny to me that there is a group of people in the house that have just discovered a dead friend, a dead loved one, and they are just totally calm, totally quiet. Um, and she calmly passes the phone over to Jose Barrera, who calmly gets on the phone, states his name, and tells the operator that Tamla's stiff. I wonder why she's stiff, Mr. Barrera, but keep talking. She is stiff. Okay. Do you know if she, uh, do you see any blood or anything? Where she... Okay. I don't know. It's okay. I'm not sure. I happened to line up for a second. Do you see any blood or anything to where, uh, from where she fell? Um, I, I don't know if I should move her over. I mean, she was completely pissed down. Okay. I mean, can you just check and see if she's breathing? If, you, if she's not breathing and you, and you know she's gone, then just leave her where she's at. If she, okay. One minute. Okay. Let me just ask you guys another thing. When has it been in a crime scene that the operators are telling people to really go over there, touch the person? If I just said that an accident has incurred at this house, we got to treat this like a crime scene right then and there. Apparently... We know this person is limp, stiff, as he said it, stiff. So why are you asking him to go near the crime scene? Right then and there is what really makes me jog back to when this probably happened and how this probably went down on the back end. Because if you say that Jose Barrera has a connection to the police department, Nine times out of ten, he made a phone call prior to this call on um, on here. So, back to 11 Alive, if you need to get this for a reference. Um, but, go ahead. I hope y'all can hear it. If you can't, please go to 11 Alive. Where I'm pausing at, um, I am pretty much giving you a backstory of what they're saying on the recording. So now he's gone. I'm completely not sure. Okay, and that's the only. You're completely not see. sure. That's what I can see without moving her over. I have okay. to face. Um, do you know if she? Um, do you know if she was suicidal at all? I have no clue. I've met her one other time. Um, you know, like my girlfriend said, she were over last night. <clears throat> um, just. We were had to do her birthday party. We we're not the woman that we believe to be deceased, but my girlfriend's birthday party. Instead of having everybody go out, she had everyone stay in. And she was the last one I saw before everybody. I mean, everybody was typically put off to bed. Did you just hear what he just said? I think he just said that he was the last one that he saw before everybody got put off to bed. Come on. Okay. How far is the um, where she would have fell from? How far is the deck from the ground? Um, I would probably say Uh, 20 feet. Okay. Yeah, 20 feet from where the feet would be on the railing. The railing itself is maybe three and a half, four feet. Okay. And so, when did we start giving dimensions and, and architectural plans to the 911 operator? When? When did we start doing that? The landscaping and 
uh, all that good stuff. When do we start doing that? We need to focus on this person who has been hurt right here. Can we focus on her? Uh, I know her name. Call it Tam. I'm assuming it's short for Tammy or Tamra. So, okay, Jose, you took the phone from your girlfriend, who is the homeowner, who apparently knew Tamra, Tamla well enough to invite her over for a sleepover. Why are you on this phone trying to give information or trying to sound worried about a guest at the party that you barely know? You don't even know her name. But you're on this 911 call. Was she there with anyone else? Yeah, the people that killed her. Uh, name is Cam Forster, H-O-R-S-F-O-R-D. And I say that allegedly. Uh, I don't believe anybody was. Uh, my girlfriend has cameras here on the back deck. That we can check. Okay. That you all can check? Why are you all checking these cameras? Why are why isn't the operator telling you, hey, before we get off this phone here, please do not touch the camera or the system until the police gets there. So did the police see her falling off the deck on those security cameras? Can they confirm that since they can confirm everything else? They can confirm that she was on Xanax. <laughs> Can they confirm that she was literally the last one out there and she was falling off of that balcony by herself? So four people dipped out. They said, oh yeah? There's somebody back there dead, Judy? Oh, uh, 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 we gotta go, Judy. Bye. Have a good day. So what it sounded like was Jose was trying to ask his girlfriend, do you know what time these people left? And if you all knew what time these people had left your house and you all were asleep from such and such time to such and such time, how do you all not notice that this woman has disappeared? And then when you do notice, it's this calm, like, oh, she just fell off the porch. People normally just dive off of porches around here. How? Uh, we, we, we can check. She's got an alarm system. Let's get the alert the doors are open on her phone. Okay. But I would, I, I think. They have alarms set up here. Yeah, they have alarm systems on the doors. They have provided that information with the time that alarm systems on the doors. They have provided that information with the time frames of when the doors open and close that night. I, I, I personally thought Tam was probably about one in the morning before I got upstairs to bed. Okay. 
and, and at that point she was the only one in the kitchen. Oh no. Okay. Let me see where the, everybody is. I have one, um, yeah, it's about the pool and cure subdivision. So I'll start the phone with you just for a minute. Um, is this going to be around back? Is that the way she needs to go? Right. So we, um, when he pulls up to the residence, uh, there will be one, one, one car in the street, four in the bank. Does he need to come and go through the house, or does he need to walk around the back? Um, they, they can go around to the, to the side. I'm going to grab my shoes, and, and I'll direct them when I get here. Now, it, it, it'll be easier for them because she's laying in the yard down, basically on the other side of the patio downstairs. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 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 All right, thank you. So how do you all feel about that? I hope you all could hear that. Um, I do apologize for that hiccup in the video. Somebody's trying to call me. I have to put my phone on airplane mode when I'm doing these. Um, so as you could hear, that communication between the 911 operator and Jose Barrera, I mean, to me, it just didn't seem right. They were talking about all kinds of different things. Um, asking him if, is there blood around and all this other stuff and you know i guess those are routine questions but you know what in the world get the police there now we keep saying she's just laying there and this is a seven minute phone call seven minutes and 50 seconds so after the 911 came 911 call came out and the case was closed immediately after the autopsy came out from the GBI and it did include the alcohol poisoning the Xanax and now what I'm hearing is that she had marijuana in her system they do claim in her family or close sources to her family do claim that Tamara is not a drug uh connoisseur she does not do drugs so this is very unusual she was a drinker she did like a cocktail or two but she was not on these type of substances and we still have not been able to confirm where the xanax may have came from as far as horseford's father and michelle graves as well her best friend they feel as though when they got the results back from their independent coroner that did another autopsy on Miss Horsford, they feel as though the injuries are not consistent with what they said happened. And that's coming from the coroner that did the independent investigation for Tamla's family. Um, he is saying that her wrists were cut a bone was broken I'm assuming in the wrist and there was no blood pool where the body was so that means that she had to have been dead prior to falling off of this very high patio or balcony that to me is very strange there was no blood from a severe fall you say her neck was broken, but her head wasn't bashed in, like her head didn't crack open when she hit the hard ground. Um, it's just amazing to me, but you see bruises all up and down her body as if she was beaten. And that's what's being said by the family and close friends. Um, they're really saying that they haven't been able to really see or get a good eye on Tamla because once she was released from the GBI, she was immediately taken to the independent coroner. So they really haven't been able to see them see her themselves but 
the coroner has relayed the information that he has been putting out. Thank God. And thank God for the lawyer in this case who is actually taking the time out and doing his job and going over this with that fine tooth comb. Um, because I do believe they will pull out something in the end, hopefully for her family. And just like I said, for her, her legacy. Her legacy is at stake here, you guys. So, apparently about these homeowners. This is new information. The homeowners are apparently moving out of that home. They have packed up and they have left. It is currently on the market for sale. They are known to move around a lot, these homeowners. And they may be in real estate. Their occupation may be in real estate. The Jean Mar Meyer or John Meyer, however she wanted to try to pronounce her name in the beginning of that audio for the 911 call, has apparently up and left the building. So that house is completely vacant. And we are still in search for answers to the attorney's questions, to the family's questions, to the friend's questions, and to us over in social media land's questions. Um, there will be more coming out about this case. I can almost guarantee it because I feel as though people are making themselves implicated when they really shouldn't be if they're trying to lay low on a crime and you kind of making yourself look guilty so the things that i'm pointing out in this video i hope you all can put it together in one big brain fart and really think on this and just see where this is headed now um the family is very adamant that this is not an accident and even though the case has closed they still have unanswered questions we still have unanswered questions and we should still be fighting for Tamla's legacy. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, once again, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel and become a part of the family. We're going to be dis discussing a lot of things in our community. So, strap on your seatbelts. There's a lot of people who don't like these messages. And I'm going to keep putting them out there just for you. So have a good one, you guys.